Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to what, hopefully, should be the very last uh, video before the summer holidays. Uh, blimey, I could do in my holidays. Um, and for higher chemistry, um, and I'm going to take you back to a word that I threw at you a long time ago. It was actually, I was just checking, it was all the way back in Rates 3 uh, video. If you want to go and quick, have a quick look on that. Uh, we were talking about the potential energy stored in covalent bonds. And I threw this word enthalpy at you and said, I'd come back to it. Well, I'm coming back to it. Um, our physics brothers and sisters uh, are very keen to tell us, quite correctly, that energy cannot be destroyed or created. Jolly good. Um, but I'm just about to have one of these, in fact. He says, from a convenient prop ball in front of him. I'm going to have a cherry. Uh, the reason I'm having the cherry is, A, I love him, and B, it gives me some energy. But you can't give energy, can you? Physics tells us that. There must already be energy in these molecules. And all I do is extract some of it. So that's the potential energy stored in covalent bonds, guys. We call it enthalpy. Um, it's where a candle flame comes from. Light a candle flame. Don't put your hand in it, of course. You learn that at a young age. Where does all that heat come from? I actually designed a worksheet all the way back in third year that actually explains that the energy that comes out of a chemical reaction is from the energy that's stored in the bonds. Uh, and if you remember, of course, it's not only one type of reaction. You can indeed have an exothermic reaction, a candle flame, for example. So that gives energy out. But you can also have endothermic reactions. When we get back to the lab, we'll have a go at an endothermic chemical reaction. Um, we take a chemical and ammonium carbonate and we measure the temperature of the water at the start we dump some ammonium carbonate in it the ammonium carbonate doesn't just dissolve it does something else with the water which I'm not going to go into at this point in time um, and the temperature crashes away down you can get freezing cold water simply by dissolving ammonium carbonate in it it's quite impressive so these are the two types of reactions what's the story with enthalpy changes um, and who cares actually as well there's a good question let's have a look at I should have done them in two different colours. I'm a Muppet. Uh, let's, let's pick appropriate colours. Let's go for an endothermic chemical energy here. So endothermic reaction in blue. And we'll have an exo in red. So, set fire to a candle, cooking a chicken. Those are your two reactions. We're going to have our graphs that we saw all the way back in rates number three reaction. I think rather than label it as potential energy, we'll probably use the correct word now, enthalpy. So up the side, we have got enthalpy. The symbol for enthalpy is H. I'm going to start using that. It's from heat, by the way. It's back in Victorian age when we didn't quite know how all this worked. Because um, this is all about movement of heat, isn't it? either in or out of the reaction. That was why they called it that. So enthalpy is H. Reaction progress along here, time basically, you know, as the reaction goes. Same thing, time. Um, if you've got an exothermic uh, reaction, now that means heat has come out of the reaction into the surrounding world, which means that the enthalpy, that's the energy stored in your chemicals at the start of the reaction was high and at the end of the reaction is now considerably lower and let's put some numbers on this shall we let's call that 25 let's call that 100 for easy counting um, and, and that is exothermic reaction, all this energy that used to be stored that you couldn't get access to has now crashed out of the bonds, boom, out into the real world, complete with sound effects like that, boom, uh, out into the real world, with the end result that you've just burnt your hand because there's an exothermic reaction happening nearby you. That heat has come out and into you. Endothermic reactions are exactly the opposite. An, an endothermic reaction feels cold to your hand because that there was not much energy stored in the bonds before and after the reaction is finished, at the end of the reaction, now there's a lot more energy stored in the bonds. Uh, the difference here has been contributed by the outside world. 
So all this energy looks like it's disappeared. Your hand is getting cold. It hasn't disappeared, of course. It's simply stored in the bonds. I should actually define that, shouldn't I? Enthalpy is the energy stored in bonds. That's what makes the world go round, of course, guys. Um, chemical reactions, respiration, courtesy of my um, cherry here. That's what, well, maybe not makes the world go round, but certainly keeps me running alive and healthy. So, um, let's fill in the missing gaps, because it doesn't just go donk to the air, of course. If you cast your minds back, or if you want to, freeze this video now, and go back and look at it, you will remember that every reaction needs a kick to start it. Now, that kick was defined as the amount of energy required to break apart the old bonds and form an activated complex. It had a name. I'm hoping you can show the screen and tell me what its name was. It is the activation energy. Uh, and it's defined as from where you start, from enthalpy from where you start to the highest point. If we follow that definition here, that's the enthalpy where we start, and that is the highest point, blimey. Heck of a bigger activation energy there, isn't there, in endothermic reactions. Uh, activation energy. Again, same thing, you're just forming the activated complex up there, and the activated complex was simply the, it's the transition point between reactants and products. The old bonds are just breaking, the new bonds are just forming. There was that funny thing, by the way, where you don't actually have to, if you manage to get up to this, you don't have to go down there, you can go back. So reactions flip backwards and forwards, it's called equilibrium, and in fact, I'd like to make a point, technically speaking, going this way, this is, this would be called the forward reaction, and it is indeed exothermic. But if you look at it backwards, if you start here and actually go back here, remember ammonia? I don't know if you cast your minds back to the Haber process. It's what's called a reversible reaction. We will look at these in many more details this year. Um, but we could actually, in theory, go backwards here, in which case, ironically, this would be an endothermic reaction if you went backwards and an exothermic reaction if you went forwards. Um, there is one more thing to mark on these graphs, guys, which I have not marked, and I'm going to mark in black. And that is the delta H. So the delta H is the change in enthalpy. Um, technically speaking, if you want to do it arithmetical, it's actually the enthalpy of the products take away the enthalpy of the reactants. And this is the enthalpy of the products. This is the enthalpy of the reactants. And the same thing here, enthalpy of products, enthalpy of reactants. Let's do some sums then, according to this. This is, technically speaking, 25 take away 100, which actually comes out in this reaction to be negative 75. I wanted to cover the units of this. The proper units of enthalpy change are kilojoules, small k, capital J, keep the physicists happy, and it's kilojoules per mole. So that, slightly counterintuitively, an exothermic reaction, ow, burny, burny hands, is negative 75, which sounds a wee bit weird. You might expect that to be positive. But that's because the definition of the change in anything is the end take away the start. Uh, have we think about that for a second. If I want to know how long, uh, what's two seconds? Sorry about that. If I wanted to know the change in temperature over the day, I would uh, find out what the temperature at the end of the day was, and then I would take it away uh, I would take away from that, sorry, the temperature at the start of the day. So if you ended the day at 6 Celsius and you started the day at 12 Celsius, you've a negative 6 is your change. Um, the other way to look at this, if this is boggling your brain about this negative being here, is you have to imagine yourself to be the molecules. You know, it's, it's hippie time. Be one with the molecules, man. Um, if you imagine yourself as being one with the molecules, then you've got all this energy stored in you at the start. Now, you've only got that much stored in you. You have lost energy. That's why that's negative. So take your pick, guys. You can either do the arithmetic one or you can do the model in your head one. But please remember that exothermic reactions have a negative delta H. If we put some corresponding numbers onto this, let's call this 15 and let's call uh, that 
90. Um, so if we apply the same formula here, that's the enthalpy of the products, which is 90, minus the enthalpy of the reactants, which is 15. 90 degree 15 is 75. Sorry about that, slight delay in that calculation. <laughs> it's been a while since I did some mental arithmetic. Um, so that's actually positive 75 kilojoules per mole. So an endothermic reaction that gets colder to us is a positive sign. Once again, you can take your pick. You can either do it arithmetically. I think that's in the data book, if I remember correctly, um, if you don't want to remember it. Or you can be one with the molecules. Look, look, guys, guys, we've only got 15 kilojoules per mole at the start, and we end up with 90. We've gained all that. That's why it's a positive. Okie dokie, let that sink in for a wee second. I did say I would also talk to you about who cares and how do we measure these enthalpy changes. Well, who cares? Industry cares. Um, because to them, time is money, but almost even more importantly than that, energy. is industry? Yeah, I spell it right. Industry cares about delta H's. Delta, by the way, I do apologise. I might have been thinking of my advanced higher. I'm so sorry. If you're wondering, what's he talking about? This triangle thing. Delta is a physics symbol that means change in. That's what that means. Um, so industry cares about delta H's. And there's a very simple reason. If you've got an exothermic reaction, then you don't want it to get too exothermic and get carried away with itself and blow your chemistry plant up. Um, so you have to know the magnitude of that uh, energy that's coming out you might even have to build a cooling system around about it. The engine in your car, uh, by the way, is based upon this. This is why you have a radiator in the front of your car engine, to get rid of all this heat that you don't really want. Uh, if it's an endothermic reaction you're dealing with, you have to know exactly how much energy you'd have to give it. You don't want to be giving it any more than that. Because industry pays a fortune for their electricity. You wouldn't believe how much more they pay than domestic households, so they really care about delta H's. Um, how do you measure a delta H? Um, don't stick a thermometer in the candle flame. Okay, it's going to go bang. Please don't try that experiment at home. So how do we measure a delta H? Believe it or not, um, it's not far off a technique that you may have used all the way back in National 5, where we have a chemical reaction happening and we try and, if it's exothermic of course, we try and catch as much of the heat as we can in, well, usually just a container of water. So let's say you've got your reaction going on down here. Um, we will put a little box around here to try and keep as much heat in as possible. This sometimes sticks right down through the bottom, by the way. Uh, that's an atrocious drawing here. I do apologise. Going to draw this again elsewhere. That's more like it. Goodness me. Try and think ahead. Never try and think ahead, Mr. Hay. You're not good at it. Um, so we've got a little copper can, we've got some H2 on there, we have a thermometer, I mean, we give it a good stir, we don't leave the thermometer on the bottom because we don't measure the temperature of the can. We're hoping that all the heat from this reaction will end up in the water, and then we measure the change in temperature of the water. We actually used an equation, it's in your data book, delta H equals C M delta T. And we use exactly the same one at higher. There is one extra thing at higher though, don't know if you noticed or not, I sneaked in kilojoules per mole. Now, I'm not going to talk about this here, you'll be glad to know, because it's a summer holidays, um, but we're going to come back to uh, what you do to this to turn it in from kilojoules, which is what this answer gives you, into kilojoules per mole. Other than that, I think that's all I want to say. Thank you very much for your patience. Enjoy the next six weeks. Five weeks? Whatever. Enjoy the next five weeks. This should have been six weeks. <laughs> and apparently, we're supposed to be getting an extra week next year to compensate. Bye, folks.